reach for the stars. Rhode Island's 2022 Statewide Self-Advocacy Conference. Elections are coming. Know your voting rights. Presented by Kate Bowden and Jeff Christie. I'm here today because I do voting education. And I want you all to know that I could help you register to vote if you're not registered, or I can help you um, answer any questions that you have either today, or you can call me any time of the year. Um, we're open year round with our hotline. So now I'm going to ask um, Jeff to unmute himself and uh, tell us again a little bit about who you are and your or you know organizations you're connected to. Is yes. anyone here, Jeff? Is that is anyone having trouble hearing Jeff? Raise your hand if you can not hear Jeff. Okay, having trouble hearing Jeff. Yeah. Jeff, I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do here. I think I'm going to have to introduce you, and we'll try again. Yeah. And we'll see if it will work. Um, Jeff has been voting since 2004. He's been doing voting rights work for a long time. He is involved with Advocates in Action. And he also used to be part of something called the, the Disability Vote Project. So he's been around doing voting stuff for a while. Now, Anthony, Anthony Phillips, yeah. are, you, are you willing to tell us who you are and if, if you have any voting question or just why you, why you're here today? My name is Anthony Phillips and I vote for the right person that's going to do a good job for our country. That's great. I heard you vote for the right person who's going to do a good job for our country. That's incredible. We're, yeah. One of the things we wanted to talk to, about today is how to make decisions about who to vote for. And yeah. you basically just, you did, you gave us, you gave us a, a way to think about voting yeah. and who to vote for. So that's awesome. Like, in 2016, when Trump ran against Hillary, I thought she would be a better candidate than Trump. Okay, so now you're sharing your opinion about yeah. who you think is a better candidate. Yeah. And that is, that's great. I just want to tell you all something that yeah. um, when I do voter education, I have to do I have to be nonpartisan. And that means I'm not allowed to tell anybody who to vote. So that yeah. means I'm not allowed to tell you my opinion. Um, because I want you to all to have your own opinions. Yes. And, and Anthony, since you brought that up, I think it's great you brought that up because yeah. it's possible that we have some people together today who have different opinions. Yeah. So can we, I think we should all just be really careful um, with each other and gentle with each other if we have different opinions. Yeah. Does that seem good? Yes. Okay, a little nod. All right, so we're gonna um, continue around. We've got Dennis and some friends up in that box. Would you unmute yourselves and tell us um, who you are, if you're willing to, to do an introduction? Um, um, Dennis Thompson. Um, so I like to go like jobs, like action stuff, like like every time I went to Marshall's, the action thing, I worked so hard. And okay. we're talking about voting rights. Yeah, because that. All right, that's that's fine. Um, Dennis, you want to let Joe introduce himself? Yeah. Then? My name is Joseph Tisdale. I've been I was in Advocates in Action last year, and it, it's it, It's tough to advocate for yourself when you're when your voting rights are going to be in question, especially now with, uh, with a pair of su Supreme Court decisions that are going to be married together goes down within the next couple of weeks. So you're worried about your voting rights. And I ask people to, to, to share if they're worried. And so thank you for sharing that. And I think we'll talk a little bit more. Um, I can tell you that there's a new, a new law in Rhode Island that makes voting easier for people. So we're lucky in that way. Um, is there anyone else with Joe and Dennis who wants to say anything? It's, um, not, it's not required. Dennis, can we let Chris yeah. have a turn? Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
vote. You want to vote, yeah. You want to vote. Okay, that's yeah. great. So I now our votes are going to be. My concern is our votes are going to be a little bit screwed up when uh, when Roe versus Wade gets turned overturned because that could have an impact on how our votes are going to be going in the future mm -hmm. and how how far backwards the, the court is going to take our country once uh, yeah, yeah. once this thing goes down. It's going I to be hear you. You're getting years. into a whole world of very, very um, important oh, conversation. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to bring us back to the river of making sure that everybody gets to, to check in. Yeah. So can I ask um, Leah and Steve do either of you want to say your name or say anything right now? Um, hi, I'm Steve. Um, I don't know a lot about voting, just the basics, but um, I'd like okay. to learn more. And okay, about that. we'll get into that. We better get into it soon. We're having a good time checking in. Um, Scott or Scott, do you want to say hello or anything you're worried about yeah. with voting? Scott. And, and voting is tricky because because sometimes you don't know who you're gonna vote for and stuff, and people don't know because if they're doing a good job or not. You're right. It can be tricky to decide who to vote for. I I agree with that. Um, let's see, Keith, did you have anything you wanted to to say or add, or are you are you just here to be the helper? Yeah, my name is Keith, and it just. Um, you're right, really, really. Who's right? You're right to uh -huh. vote. Oh, okay, it's, a, it's right to vote. It is your right, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so we had a little check-in and um, what we were thinking about doing is, um, talking a little bit about kind of just what voting is and um, how to register to vote and things like that. So can I get a nod? Like, do people want to hear about voter registration? Um, yeah, actually I should say, is anyone here um, already registered and they've already been voting? R raise your hand if you've already been voting. Okay. so. We have some voters, and Jeff has. Has some? Have you guys been voting before, in the the Joe and Chris world? Chris, have you voted? Okay, so it seems like everybody here has voted before, which means that you're all everybody's registered to vote. What about you, Anthony? Have you had a had a try at voting before? I don't know if he can hear us. He's traveling. Okay, well then, let's talk about just the a, a little bit of the basics. Um, Keith, can you put on our uh, PowerPoint for us? Yes, here it goes. Okay, elections are coming. I love that graphic, someone made that for us. Let's move into the next picture, the next slide. Um, you know who we are, so Disability Rights Rhode Island is where I come from, and um, we can move to the next slide. We did our introductions and we got everybody, so that was great. We're already doing excellent. Um, this is a little thing I have to say. So I'm a lawyer, um, but this, this workshop isn't like legal advice. I'm not your lawyer. So if you have, if you have questions about your own uh, voting rights that you wanna privately talk to, me, you can call me. And, and if you have a, a legal problem related to your vote, your voting rights, I might be able to help you. Um, okay, we can go to the next slide. Okay, so voting is, um, it's a way to make choices and decide who's in charge. And there are a lot of uh, voting words and terms that um, if you don't really know these words, it can be hard to understand voting. So we're gonna talk, Jeff, nod your head. Do you think we should talk about words and terms about voting? Give us a nod, you're muted. Okay, I'm gonna take that as a yes. All right, we're going to go to the next slide.
slide because I've got some words that, um, okay. This is, I wanted you to know about this group. It, they're called the Self, the Autistic Self Advocacy Network. And um, they have some, um, some information where they have lots of definitions of voting words and they have graphics. So if you wanna um, check this out on your own sometime, you can, you can, it's a great resource. And you can go to the next slide and we'll talk about some of those words. Okay, register to vote. Register means to sign up to vote. Get on the, get on the, the, the list of people who are allowed to vote. And it seems that most of you are registered to vote. So that's great. And um, once you register to vote, you, you, you stay registered, but if you move or if something changes, then you need to update your information. Um, and you can move to the next slide. I do want to ask, uh, sometimes I use words that you don't know, and I'm trying not to do that, but if I do use a word that you don't know, um, raise your hand and I'll try to explain it, okay? So we have some words here. One of them is register, which we heard is you sign up to vote. Um, Anybody know what a citizen is? I see a raised hand. Um, can you unmute so that our friend whose hand is raised can tell us what's a citizen? Citizen is the way you, where you're from. If you're from Africa, if you're from America. What country you're from. Yeah, so a, a United States citizen is somebody who was born in the United States or they, or they have become a citizen. Um, Wow, I didn't know these hands were gonna be moving around in the background on this slide. It's making me feel seasick. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, can you go back to, to the waving hands for a minute just so I can remember? Um, okay. Okay, resident. So a resident, who wants to do that? What's a resident? You can go with your raised hand. You know the residents like um like uh, like the like residents kids. Your residence is where you live, right? So a resident is a person um, who lives somewhere. So you have to be a resident of Rhode Island. You have to live here in order to vote here, and um, that that word comes up when you're on looking at your voter registration form. Mm -hmm. And okay, one more term that we'll talk about now, and then we'll take a break on that. Political party, a political party. Uh, anybody have any ideas what a political party is? Like a party, like the guest. I heard you say, I see a raised hand. How about giving that person a try? Is, a, is an affiliated group of individuals who are running for office, the Democrat party, the Green party, the Republican party. Wow, that was a stellar answer. So I asked, what is a political party? And you said it was an affiliated group of people who are running for office. Now, not everyone knows what affiliated means. I would say that um, one way to think about a political party is it's a group of people with similar ideas who are working together. So it can be the leaders or the people who, who vote for those leaders. And, um, and you gave us some examples. You, you mentioned the Republican Party, the Democrat Party, and the Green Party. So those are, those are all political parties. Um, so that was, that was great. Let's move to the next slide and see what, it, see what it's about. Who can register? So we kind of went through this earlier today. And um, let's see if we can get all of those graphics up together. Um, were, were most of you uh, in our session this morning on voting? Yeah, can I get a nod? Or are some of you here for the first time? Okay, so I don't wanna spend a lot of time repeating things, um, but I will say that I just wanna make very clear that some people have a legal guardian and sometimes they think they're not allowed to vote if they have a legal guardian, but that is not the rule. And um, I'm trying to get the, the word out about that in Rhode Island. 
So um, just having a legal guardian does not take away your right to vote. And um, you would there would have to be a, an order from a judge from a court that says you're not allowed to vote in order for you to, to lose your right to vote. Um, does anyone have questions about that part? Oh, you have to unmute. Can you un do you still have a question up there? Yeah, because like um like 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 um like voting like the right like um right to vote in like stuff right right yeah we're talking we're, we're, talking, we're talking about, about voting rights so you have a right to vote even if you have a guardian the yeah only thing like that melanie melanie is my guardian too okay well you can still vote unless there's the court order that says he's not allowed to vote but really if anyone wants to vote and they feel that they're not allowed to, they can, they can call my office, the Disability Rights Rhode Island, and we can try to find out what's going on and help. All right. All but, right? Yeah, your phone number is the same one, right? The call? It's been for a long time, 831-3150. Um, uh, and that will be in this presentation too. But you can also, um, if you Google Disability Rights Rhode Island, that that will come up. Um, I feel like did we lose Jeff? Where is where is Jeff? Is he here? Oh, all right. Hopefully he'll we come back. I'm gonna have to ask you all to help me with this presentation because yeah, he's here. It's not supposed to be me doing all the talking, but he's having some technical trouble. Okay, let's it's move on. Yeah. So. All right. Let's see what we can see if there's a um, a little question here. Jeff, tell us about yes. the different ways to vote, the different ways to vote. If you can give us any one of them. Uh, you can vote through a provision, through mail ballot. Yes. Yes, you can. Okay. Let's, um, in our slides, Keith, we're going to slowly move forward. Um, we went through eligible. Uh, oh, hold on. So in case anyone does need to change their voter registration, you can do it by online or by mail or in person. You can scoot along there, Keith. Okay, and keep going. This is just a picture to let you know that if you want to make any changes to your voter registration, you can do it online if you have a state ID. We can move along. You would need to give your date of birth, uh, and the ID and the name as it appears on your card. So what we're looking at here is the Voter Information Center. And this is on the Secretary of State's website. And there's so much you can do on this website. All you have to do is Google Rhode Island SOS and you'll be able to find this Voter Information Center. And here you can change information on your voter registration. You can find out who your leaders are. You can get a form to vote by mail and, and do so many things. So that's getting us back to those different ways to vote. And let's um, see if we can um, go into the next slide, see if we can find the ways to vote. We're kind of skipping through a little bit of voter registration since everyone is registered. Um, okay, hold on here. Before we get into the ways to vote, some more terms because they are, these are gonna come up when we're talking about the ways to vote. Has anybody heard of a candidate? You might Nobody get sick candidate? again, Katie. The Say that again? The hands are moving, so you might get I know. <laughs> so. So I'll tell you, uh, I think some of you know this, but I'll tell you, a candidate is a person who wants the job of leader, a leadership job. So you might hear someone say, um, Taylor is a candidate for mayor. And that means that Taylor wants to be mayor. And um, has anyone ever heard somebody say, um, he's running for office? somebody's running for office. That means that you want the job and you go around and tell people your ideas and, and you try to get them to vote for you. 
The last one here is a debate. Anyone know what a debate is? A debate. Jeff, can you tell us about a debate? You're on mute. Like a like debate thing, like um, like the, like sometimes the debate it's like a like a right? so like the candidate, like the president, goes to the to Rhode Island, right? Okay, I heard you say the candidates and I and in the debate, and so what happens with the debate is that the candidates talk about their ideas and they try to show everybody that they have the best ideas. They try to get people to vote for them. Does that make sense? Yep. Scott's raising his hand. What do you want to talk about, yes. Scott? If candidates go on stage and, and they go against each other and they have like news people talk to them and tell them the question and stuff and then they have to answer them. Yeah. And sometimes they try to avoid answering the question, don't they? Okay, let's move to the next slide, Keith. We're learning a lot about the different words, but I think that's enough for now. Okay, rights. Let's talk about what your rights are. It's kind of a weird thing to talk about, your rights. So I know this is a little bit wordy, but I didn't know how to make a picture of a right, and, and maybe Deb can help me for next year. But Rights are things that you have that you're entitled to that are yours that allow for different kinds of like freedoms. So one example in the United States, we have the right to free speech. You can say what you wanna say. Yeah. Um, and many people with disabilities went to school and they had a right to have special education services. So with voting, there are also rights. And let's go to the next slide and talk. I'm just going to kind of list them out and maybe mention one or two. So you have rights as uh, people with disabilities. And one of the rights that you have is the right to have help. So you can have help with marking the ballot. Your helper is not allowed to tell you who to vote for, though. So you can have help. Um, you have a right to privacy. And that means nobody is allowed to know how you're voting. So um, one way to get help without um, losing your privacy is you can use the technology, the machines that Jeff was telling us about earlier. Um, the automark will, and the express vote will allow a person to mark a ballot. The machine will, you have headphones and the machine reads the ballot to you and you can have your privacy that way. Um, you can, you also, you notice that this person uses a wheelchair and is headed into the polling place. You have a right to be able to get in and out of your polling place, even if you use a wheelchair. So if you ever, ever go to a poll and um, you can't see how to get in, or you see that there are stairs, that means it's not an accessible polling place and that's bad. And you can, that would be a great time to call my office, Disability Rights Rhode Island and say, hey, I found a problem um, because people have a right to be able to get in and out of their polling place. Um, and there's our number, 401-831-3150. Can always call me about voting questions or if you see a problem. So that's a little bit about voting rights. And, um, this, this talks about the kinds of elections, which we mentioned this morning, and the dates and deadlines. So the primary election is the first one. It's coming up in September. And uh, you have to be registered by August, but you all are registered. Uh, the general election is in November, and you need to be registered by October 9th. Remember, though, if you've moved, you have to update your information. Ways to vote. Okay, it took a while to get back to where we started. Jeff told us that one way to vote is by mail ballot. So that is when you, you can request that the uh, elections people will send a ballot to your house and you can fill it out at home. 
there's uh, does, does any Jeff, are there other ways to vote besides mail ballot? Anybody else know of other ways you can vote? Yeah. Early in person. Early in person. Yes. So for a long time, Rhode Island kind of had this thing called early voting, but they didn't call it that. They called it emergency mail ballot voting. But there is a new law that was passed in Rhode Island, and we now officially have early voting. And that means that in the 20 days before an election, you can vote most of the time at city or town hall. Scott, I see your hand up. Yeah, What's up? They, at my town hall, they did early one. They had the election home at your town and, and all that stuff at the town hall. They did that early, but people couldn't, couldn't stand or do the crowd and stuff. They did that earlier. Yes. So let's talk about this for a moment. A couple of things that I want you to know with early voting. Usually it happens at city or town hall in the 20 days before an election. But um, right now they don't do it on the weekends. So if you want to vote early, I suggest you call your city and town hall for a few reasons. Number one, ask them what their hours are. Number two, if you... Um, Ask them where the accessible entrance is if you need that, because sometimes, sometimes they move the early voting to a different room um, to make you know to have enough space. So for early voting, I would call and also ask them how busy they are. Big cities get really busy in the last few days. I know Cranston had a thousand early voters in the day before the election. So there was actually a longer line the day before the election at town hall than there was on the day of the, of, of the election at the polls. So those are my tips for early voting. Call them to find out where it's happening, where the uh, accessible door is and how busy it gets. Okay, Anthony, what do you have on your mind? I have a question. Okay. Have you ever met the governor? <laughs> Have I ever met the governor? I have not met governor. So gov we, our governor now is Governor McKee. Yep, I met and him. And I have, I have not met him. Have you met him? I met him twice. Wow. How yeah. did you feel about that? He, he I felt happy. Because okay. I've been trying to get in to meet him last year for a good year. So. Okay. Have you met the former governor, Gina? Wow, you've met a lot of people. Have you met her? I don't think so. No, okay. Okay, so right now it is 2.24 and I think we're supposed to be done by 2.30. So uh, I want to ask people if they have questions that we haven't talked about that they really wanna talk about. Anthony. I have something to share. I want to show you how the early last meeting, but when I um when I was younger, I got to meet two two of the former presidents. Wow, you seem like you really like to meet politicians. Yeah, I met cool. President Bush, wow. Judge W, and President Obama. Wow, I President would like Obama. To hear when I was in high school for South Kingstown, President Obama came to give a graduation speech to the class that was graduating. Wow. And I That's pretty amazing. After, yeah. That's pretty amazing. Okay, yeah. does anybody else have questions? Nope. No questions? Somebody talk, oh, did, I'm sorry, Steve, did you have a question? I was just wondering the primary coming up. Yes. Is that, is that the one between the same party? That is such a great question. I'm glad you brought it up. So with the primary, the primary is the first election. And it's when we you have to narrow down the number of people in a particular political party who want the job. So in September. Right now, there are at least five Democrats who want to be governor, and there are four or five Republicans who want to be governor, and there are people in the other parties. So in the primary, you'll choose 
from those from each group and you have to choose which group you wanted to vote in so for example if you are registered as a republican you would only be allowed to choose from the republicans if you're registered as a democrat you can only choose from the democrats in the in the primary now there's this something we didn't talk about called unaffiliated that's like you're independent so if yeah. you are if you're registered as an independent on primary day you get to choose whether you want a democrat ballot or a republican ballot they'll ask you when you check in and then once you vote if you if you ask for a democrat ballot or and you vote it you'll you'll be considered part of the democrat party if you want to go back to independent you can do that and you can do that online or on with a, a form you can call my office i can help you i see your hand anthony i just want to make one more point which is that in the general election you're not limited by the political parties so for the general you could vote for a republican for governor a democrat for mayor it doesn't have the same rules for the the general election um and there's one thing that jeff and i wanted to talk about and that is how to go about choosing a candidate if you google how do i choose a candidate you'll find lots of great information i found some information from the league of women voters that talks about how to choose a candidate um and i think that the Autistic Self Advocacy Network also has information to help you. But Jeff, weren't we talking about um, it's helpful to choose leaders that will make laws that help your life be better? Um, we talked about- Yes, yeah, we were. We, could, we talked about if you can choose leaders because you think they have the best experience for the job and you can choose leaders right. because you think that they have the same kind of values that you have like you like their character you like you know the way they are in the world scott what do you what do you have on your mind yeah because because they having all these things on these ads on tv about the governors and stuff have ads on tv and and, and, and they feel about what they do they, they do have ads and sometimes ads Sometimes people, politicians are mean to each other with ads. Did you ever see that? Yeah. They can be really yeah. mean. So I think you should pay attention to the ads and you, you maybe you'll say, oh, that's a great ad. I like him or uh, that's, I don't like that kind of ad. I'm not sure about this person. Um, we have about one minute. Um, does anybody want to brainstorm ways you can get information so that you can feel like you've been researching the issues anybody know how they would do that anthony i just had one thing to say before we end um okay when, when back when 2020 when it, there was the primary election i was looking and i thought i don't like how trump ran randed the first time but i i went with bill weld in the primary then in the regular election since but that since uh, Trump wasn't since Trump won the primary and went with President Biden. Okay, so you're sharing your opinion. Yeah. And you're allowed to do that, and other people can be private about their opinions, but thanks yeah. for telling us. And um, yeah. I just want you, I just want to thank you all for for coming today. Thank you so much. Was this helpful? Yes, thank you. See some nods. Okay. Yes. Um we are i think we need to wrap it up i don't know if if they're they're just gonna like we'll automatically go to another room or it's the end of the day does anyone know what's supposed to happen next oh suddenly yeah. started a little bit late so this okay time. you think we can have a few more minutes yeah, okay um because there is something that i that that jeff and i wanted to talk about and that is um preparing to vote um and marking a ballot um is it too late to get back into that powerpoint keith because i think i have a slide that shows no, people no. about how it's how how you mark a ballot and i can give some instructions on that 
Voter ID. Everyone, you need to have a current and valid photo ID if you vote at early voting or the polls. They have a rule that um, if, you're, if your ID expired, but it hasn't been expired for more than six months, it'll still work. And if you do not have any kind of ID, you can get a free ID from the state and I can help you do that. So that's an important thing. And let's see if we can find that. There we go. Here is a, here is, um, a picture of a sample ballot. And um, the important thing to know about the ballot is that you vote when you fill in the little oval next to the name of the person that you want. So if you see um, over here, they're showing you a pencil. It, you wouldn't use a pencil, you would use a pen. And you would fill in the oval next to the person that you want to vote for. And also it's hard to see because this is small, but here it says the kind, it says what the job is that the person wants. It says how long the job is. And then it says vote for one. So if you're only allowed to, to make one choice, it's vote for one. Some of the races like school committee, you might get to vote for more than one person. So it's important to check right around here and know how many choices you get to make. Um, so that is, that is something that we wanted you to know. And now I think it is time for us to leave yeah, the breakout we, uh, call that. So, hey, can I ask you a quick question? Right. Yes. When, when, or if, if or right? when do you think ranked choice voting would come into Rhode Island? That I don't know the answer to. John Marion from Common Cause probably has an opinion about that. They, they, they do really good work and they might even have something on their website about that. Okay, great. So right. sorry, I don't know the answer. That's okay, um, thank you. Thank you all for being here today. And um, there was uh, there's so much to cover. We didn't cover everything, but I feel like we had a really good talk. It will be on the website. That's It'll be on the website. And um, I think the slides okay. hopefully will be on the website. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Visit our website at the following link to watch this recording again. While you're there, You'll also find links to the information the presenters mentioned in their session, along with other resources about voting and Rhode Island's upcoming elections. Elections are coming. Know your voting rights. www.advocatesinaction.org slash 2022 breakout 2-2 Produced by Advocates in Action Rhode Island Copyright 2022